Welcome, friends. Last guy here, and it's time for more Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations. Here we go. January 8th, 946 AM, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Good morning, Mr. White. That's, that's per Pearl again. Good morning, Mr. White. Is it Mr. Wright? Good morning, Maggie. So what do you think is going to happen today, sir? Yesterday's session didn't go so well, and then ended on a giant mystery. That's still Pearl. That's true. And we still haven't solved a single part of it yet. Are you okay, Nick? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, of course. I saw that, that little flash of doubt in your eyes. N no that wasn't doubt. That was, um, determination. I don't believe you. It's nearly time, Maggie. You'd better get going to the defendant seat. Badger, don't let me down, Mr. Wright. I'm counting on you. Going with that. Hey, pal. Oh, here we go. Hey, Detective Gumshoe. What's stressing Maggie out? She doesn't need that. How did you know she was stressed? I was watching through the doorway. Oh. You look like you lost the case already. Show a bit of confidence, will you, pal? Here, maybe this will help. Huh? Have you taken up aromatherapy too? Not in a million years, pal. Don't tell me you don't remember this thing. Hmm, come to think of it, that doesn't look like one of those ar aromatherapy bottles. This is a small bottle that turned up in Tribune's kitchen a couple days ago. Wow, look at all these little bottles. Oh, they're aromatherapy oils. He's got so many, they're overflowing onto the floor. Hey, wait a minute. There's one bottle that's different from the, all the others. Well, what do you know? And it doesn't have a label either. And, sniff, it doesn't smell. We finally got the analysis results back from the lab. So, what is it? Is it the poison? I'm afraid not, pal. It's medication. Medication? Oh, it's the ear medicine. Yeah, for ears. Topical use only, apparently. For ears, you mean. Yeah, it's the medication Glen Elk was using for his ruptured eardrum. What was Glen Elk's ear medicine doing in the kitchen? Small bottle refiled into the court record. Um, what about the unidentified fingerprints? Anything on that? Someone screwed up, so... They only had the time to analyze the contents of the bottle. Another hour and they might have gotten something on the prints, but... Hmm, that's going to weaken its impact as a piece of evidence. Okay, pal, this is it. Make sure your defense is impregnable today, got it? Yeah, today's trial. I'm gonna expose that guy for what he's done. Oh, my name isn't Phoenix Wright. Sure. Sure. Okay, here we go. January 8th. 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number four. <clears throat> Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Bird. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Museum, ready and waiting as always, Your Honor. Very good. Then we'll get underway at once. Yesterday we heard the testimony of Mr. Victor Kudo. He claims to have witnessed the defendant putting a powder into the victim's coffee. However, the witness's testimony was plagued with a number of problems. The mark on the rim of the cup shows that the victim drank with, from it with his right hand. But according to the old man's testimony, he picked it up with his left hand. Thank you, Mr. Godot. Furthermore, according to the witness's account, the victim was listening to the radio with an earpiece in his left e ear. Yet the victim's left eardrum was ruptured, which made him ineffectively deaf in that ear. It's amazing how many contradictions a in a, a single case can have now, huh, Nick? Hey, Yoshi. <laughs> Ever heard of sugar? Yes, that's true. How about the white powder? Museum. Huh. Allow me to enlighten you, Your Honor. The world, you see, keeps turning, and we must turn with it. Uh, you've lost me already, Mr. Godot. 
Don't let the mysteries of yesterday mystify you today. Only losers think like that. You've got to change with the times. That's one of my rules. Are you implying that you've resolved these contradictions? You know the answers to these riddles. Oh, no, 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 no. Know the answers to these riddles. The old guy wasn't just throwing seed in here. He was throwing us off the scent. My tongue got bit. He was throwing us off the scent. And today I'll prove it. Okay. Very well. Let the first witness take the stand. Also okay. Oh, it's time for this guy. Okay. Museum. And you are... Oh, bonjour, everyone! I am Jean Armstrong, the owner and a chef of La Tresbien, 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 restaurant Enchante. Oh, Enchante. There you go. Forgive me for asking, witness, but are you a woman? Oh la, oh la la, monsieur! As you can see, I am Le Pot and Perky Gentleman, no? Uh, um... On the day of the incident, you were in Trebien's kitchen. Isn't that right? Who is you, Monsieur? Huh? Everything feels right. Okay. Huh. <laughs> wow, he's totally unfazed. Doesn't anything intimidate this guy? Besides getting rocked by Phoenix? Very well, your testimony, please, witness. Please tell the court what happened that day at Trebian. We oui. volunteers. I don't think that's how you pronounce that. I have one French friend, and I'm pretty sure they'd kill me if they saw this episode, or any of these episodes. When it all happened, there was... There were just two customers in my restaurant. I remember it was experiment. I was experimenting with some new art deco that day. Like having a large mirror between the tables, for example. Oui, perhaps that is what the old man was looking at. The cup, the earpiece, and the glasses, he would have seen everything in reverse. No, that's what I was wondering. That's what I was wondering. A m m m mirror We oui. un grand mirror. The most enormous mirror. Yeah, I was wondering if there might be a mirror somewhere. And suddenly, the mystery disappears. Easy. Like I said, the world keeps turning, so roll with it. Mmm, that would explain the coffee cup and the Yippie's conundrum. The mirror would have made everything appear back to front. What the heck? It's way too early in the morning for this to be happening to me. Now then, Mr. Knight, you may begin your cross-examination. But owls At Tribune. Alright, here we go. Grass. And who were the two customers, exactly? Mas, of course. The young man who died. And the other, not so young man. Hmm. You are referring to yesterday's witness, I presume. What about the other man Maggie says she saw at the table? Something tells me Mr. Armstrong isn't planning to disclose his existence. We need some hard evidence first before we can bring him up, don't we? I guess I'll just have to try a different approach for the time being. You were experimenting with Art Deco? How come I never heard about that before today? You are not familiar with the language of interior design, Monsieur? Please stay on topic. Now why didn't you tell the court about this before? But I did, just a few moments ago. Um, excuse me, Mr. Armstrong. This deco you mentioned, are you referring to some sort of deco... Deco tour. No, no, Art Deco. It is a style of design, Your Honor. He's talking about interior design, walls, ceilings, carpets, that kind of thing. 
Ah, yes, of course. That deco. I was trying to achieve a more la effeminente look for my restaurant. I was planning the most bold remodeling of le deco. Okay. All right, next. How big of a mirror are we talking about? Here. Oh, something about four meters wide and uh, about two meters high. How many meters was the thing in the Death Star? <laughs> Let's see, if one meter is about one yard, holy glass! In a frame, that's huge! I was intending to install it on the ceiling eventually. The ceiling? Was there a mirror on the ceiling? I don't remember. Was none, but I decided not to go with it in the end. What should I do? Should I ask him more about the mirror or not? Press harder. Always press. If you really had such a large mirror in the restaurant, someone would have noticed it. But there's nothing about a mirror in Mr. Cordo or Maggie Bird's testimonies. B -b Museum. You didn't ask, Trite. You have only yourself to blame for such sloppy work. What? A mirror was delivered to Trebian the day before the incident. Real? Really? Museum. As Mr. Armstrong testified, he was carrying out some design changes. And as it turned out, he didn't actually use the mirror in the end. This just doesn't add up. Even if a mirror was delivered to Trebian, it doesn't prove that it was in the restaurant on the day of the crime. Huh. If you want to doubt someone, Trite, look in the mirror. I'm sure the person looking back at you will be dubious enough. Hmm. Though the witness yesterday had seen the victim reflected in a mirror. We oui, perhaps that is what La Oudman was looking at. I read that. Normally, I'd expect people to know the difference between a reflection and a real object. Objection. Museum. Normally, how does normality come into this? That's lame, Trite. Even for you. Huh? Are you trying to say that if something isn't normal, it isn't possible? Is that it? Where? <laughs> Where does that leave the porky headed lawyer and the top knot chick over there? And the ungodly cool guy with the mask over here. Well, trite. What? Ah! Not the hair! I do not have a top knot! Mr. Kadoo is correct. <laughs> a lack of normality is no basis for discounting an argument. Bien, logic as one la de. We're getting nothing out of this right now. Everything? He would have seen everything in reverse? We. Oui. Hey Nick, we should take a second think about what old CD said in his testimony. How did he phrase it again? The boy was wearing this earpiece on the same side as the green lens of his ma specs. No question, you can lock me up if I'm wrong. It was his left ear, without a doubt. Then use the same hand to pick up the cup. His left hand. If he saw everything he described in, reflected in a mirror, then everything he said he saw on the left was actually on the right, huh? And that clears up all the problems with his testimony. I guess, or does it? Huh. It's kind of hard to believe everything is the fault of a mirror, but... You think old CD saw everything through a reflection? If he did, it would explain all the contradictions in his testimony. But that just makes the situation worse for Maggie. There's gotta be something in that old man's testimony. We've just gotta dig deeper. Alright, so, uh, I don't even know what I'm doing. Alright, um, hmm. When all it, you know, all happens, there were just two customers in my restaurant. Remember, I was experimenting with some new art decos that day. A large mirror, for example. Perhaps it was what the old man was looking at. I don't see if there's a way to prove he had it on his left. Doesn't say which ear it's for, now does it? Yeah, there it is right here. <clears throat> he wore an HMD over his left eye. Right there. Okay, so... 
Use that to our advantage. Okay, I'm saving. Okay. Nope, not there. Okay, let's try another spot. Alright, uh, let's try the blueprints, because I got no idea right now. Okay. Floor plans, no. No. Oh, I'm dead. I don't have any idea what's the problem here. I'm dying here. Okay. Leave it. He couldn't lie about such a huge object like that. It must have been there in the restaurant somewhere. Museum. Hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> so the witness yesterday had seen the victim reflected in a mirror. Ah, oh, so nothing new there. Press this. Uh, this is about normality again. Okay, so... Guess who's screwed right now? Me! I have no clue where to push here. Oh, no, I missed this one! Uh, uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh... Hey, Admiral. Uh, wait, did I forget this one? I forgot this line! I did not push anything on this line! Uh, 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 go back to that last one. I, uh, forgot that one was there. Okay, so let's put all the evidence on this one. Present the profile. Okay. Kill me! Oh! I had the right one five, ten minutes ago. Ah! <laughs> oh, just skip all of that somehow. I don't know. We'll see what Jinx does in editing. The coffee cup, the earpiece, and the HMD. Let's think back over Mr. Kudo's testimony a second, shall we? The boy was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the green lens of his specs. No question, you can lock me up if I'm wrong. It was his left ear, without a doubt. So to summarize, we were told both the HMD and the earpiece were on the victim's left side. Now, Mr. Kudo saw it all, saw it all as a reflection in a mirror. It means both HMD and the earpiece were actually on the victim's right side. Exactamente. You see, monsieur? Now that you think about it, it is not so odd, none. Unfortunately, that's where we run into a mo monumental contradiction with the facts. If Mr. Cudeau really did see everything in a mirror, why is it that the HMD is on now on the wrong side of his head? Oh, cool, Evan Rose. Order, order, Mr. Knight is correct. If the witness genuinely deserved the victim reflected in a the mirror, then we would expect the victim's earpiece. Then we expect the victim's eyepiece to have been on his over his right eye. Objection. Museum, how bitter. Tr Museum. Trite, you should have a taste for this of this bitterness. I'll cut. It'll calm you down in no time. Uh, uh, are you talking about your coffee or something completely different? Not in your pants, right? You don't understand the way the witness thinks. How he thinks. You remember this, I presume. The I broke the vase sorry apology? Le I mean, Mr. Kudo's sworn testimony? Museum. Exactly. The old man has one very grievous... Habit, other than throwing seeds. The more impression something makes, the more muddled his mind makes it. And what's the most striking thing about Mr. Elug? Clearly it's the victim's eyepiece. And that's my point. The old man strikes again. Mr. Elug's HMD made a big impression on the old man. I saw the earpiece and those newfangled spectacles he was wearing. Oh yes, they were both on his left ear. Do you, do you hear? His left ear. Huh. Well, trite. Ugh. That's the worst but best impression of Kudo ever. Wow. I really thought he was old CD for a minute there. Kudo's good. No. Enough. Must agree that yesterday's witness was irresponsibly rash in much of his testimony. 
bad luck, Nick. Looks like the boil of a contradiction you found is just a rash. Okay. I don't even know what that's about. Museum. A mirror can't be beaten by a handful of seeds, nor can it lie. So, what exactly was the old man looking at? Fill us in, Mr. Armstrong. Go on, tell the court, we're all ears. Oui, I can explain. Please, if you will look at the plans of the restaurant. Okay, oh, we're getting a new testimony about the mayor, okay. So what is going on here? Alors, everyone is sitting comfortably. The middle, it was in the middle of the restaurant, dividing the two halves. There is only one seat from which you could have seen an image of the victim. That was the seat at the table next to the victims. That was where the old man was sitting. At a terrible incident occurred, I had, I moved the mirror so it was not in the way. Okay. But naturally, I did not touch anything else. Naturally. Mm, well, we already got the contradiction for that one. I see no problems with the explanation we have just heard. On the table next to the victims, Mr. Cadeau could have seen the victim in the mirror. What a naughty little coquette I am, confusing all the men like this. Don't worry about it. We can keep up, except for the guy breaking out in a cold sweat over there again. Ugh, I hate that guy. You said you didn't touch anything else apart from the mirror. Are you quite sure about that? Volunteers, of course. Very well, Mr. Knight, your cross-examination, if you please. Okay. The mirror. The mirror? It was in the... Oh, we read all that, so keep going. It was in the middle. So run this by me again. The mirror was here, correct? We... Oui. We? Oui? Really? Because I know if I were you, I wouldn't have put a mirror there. It would be in the way. You see, look who's talking, trite. Huh? You're obstructing my view, among other things. But, 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 this is my seat in the courtroom! Tribune's charm is that it gives you the impression that you're the only customer. Temporarily placing a mirror in that spot would hardly be in the way. Unlike you, trite. But it does give the old man the chance to see the other guy, so how does that help? I feel... I tell you, Monsieur, the mirror was there in the middle of the restaurant. Okay. What are you talking about? The old man could still see him, like, even with that mirror thing, because right here... Like, looking at it... Even if it's right here, he could still see from here. It would also explain why he didn't see the other guy. Press. And where would he, that be? Ooh la la, look how you lean towards me. I always attract the younger boys. Maybe I should keep you in suspense a little longer. Mr. Armstrong, tell the court what you know at once. I attract the older ones too, you know. Handsome. Shall I tease you too? Ugh. I'm already seeing a very hot someone. So I'm afraid you'll be waiting for a long time. I bet she has mocha cream skin and cappuccino perfume. Bien, I would tell you, there was only one seat from which you could have seen. That was the last seat at the table next to the victims. That was where the la old man was sitting. So why can you only see the victim from that particular seat? Mas, ma, monsieur, is, it is obvious, no? If you look at the plans, you will understand. The victim would have been reflected in the mirror like so. If you're sitting at the table next to him, you would see everything, no? 
So that's the seat old CD was sitting in on that day. When the poisoning happened, the old man was sitting at the table next to the victim. Why does it seem kind of odd? Exactly! Did you move the mirror while Mr. Cadeau was off calling the police? Oui, exactement. I killed it out of the restaurant, Zin. You moved a huge mirror like that all by yourself? What can I say? I know how to pick things up, handsome. Uh. <laughs> Cadeau actually laughed at something. Well, given the witness's physique, I suppose it is possible. Did you move anything else from the crime scene, Mr. Armstrong? I look like the obliquing, obliquing, oblig. Uh, I look like the obliging type, no? But naturally, I did not touch anything else. I forgot the press on that. It is pretty strange, though, isn't it? I mean, nobody mentioned anything about a really large mirror. You think someone would have? But Maggie didn't, and neither did Old Sadie. And the only logical explanation is. That there was no mirror inside Trebian at that time. Now I've got... Now I've just got to prove it, somehow. Got to press that last one. You always want to press them full, so... There we go. Are you sure about that? I touched nothing except la mirror? Hmm. Mr. Wright, is there something the witness has said that doesn't match the crime scene? Yeah, there is. I just can't put my finger on exactly what. Huh. Suffering from a case of heartburn, right? We, I have just the thing for that in oil with golden milk and frankincense. Add a few drops to your coffee and voila. Enjoy. Focus, Phoenix. Breathe. I need to ignore those two and just find some evidence. Okay, there. We know what it is. I got two contradictions I think I can work on, but let's do this one first. The small bottle. What? Alright, so no? But what about the lottery ticket? Let's try the lottery ticket instead then. No on that too, huh? Let's get the black, the blueprint. No? Okay, you're killing me here. I guess we'll try about that vase, so let's see here, we're at the start, save. Let's just try the vase for a while. Nope. Nope. Oh, oh, we got it, we got it, okay, there it is, right there. That was the last seat at the table next to the victims. That was where the old man was sitting. There you go, right here. Okay, there it is. Found it. Objection! Your Honor, Mr. Cadeau's words yesterday strongly contradict Mr. Armstrong's testimony. This is the letter of apology that was written by Mr. Cadeau, is it not? I realize it looks useless, Your Honor, but this is still testimony. Huh. I guess useless people are only really good at identifying useless things. What relevance does this scrap of paper have to the trial, Mr. Knight? Mr. Cadeau's testimony is actually very relevant to the question at hand, Your Honor. Because it very clearly contradicts with this evidence, piece of evidence. Check something. Yeah, right there! Right there! The vase isn't broken in this picture. This piece of evidence contradicts with testimony. We have heard, Your Honor. The crime photo. Yes, this photo clearly shows something that theoretically should not exist. What on earth do you mean by that, Mr. Knight? Should not exist. Huh, sounds like you're describing yourself, trite. Who the hell are you? Now then, if the defense would please clarify its statement. Where? What is the something that this should not exist in this photo? Here, right here. There's one thing that has was clearly demonstrated by yesterday's testimony. Mr. Cadeau broke the vase that was on the table where he was sitting. And yet, 
As the court can see, there is an unbroken vase on the table next to the victim. Why? Because Mr. Cadeau was not, in fact, sitting at the table next to the victim at all. Objection. You see, don't be an idiot, right? That's impossible. That seat's the only one Kudo could have seen the victim's reflection from. Exactly. Huh? There is only one conclusion we can draw from this contradiction. There was no mirror in the Trebian at that time. That day. Your testimony, Mr. Armstrong, is an elaborate lie. Mon dieu! Objection. Museum. Don't try to confuse the court, right? Obviously, the witness cleaned up the vase. While the police were taking their time getting to the crime scene. Objection. Unfortunately, Mr. Godot, that doesn't quite work for me. Mr. Armstrong already testified to the contrary in his own words. I did not touch anything else except the mirror. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Got him! Ugh! <laughs> Friggin' Godot! Well, witness, what do you have to say for yourself? Never. I was right. There was no mirror in the restaurant that day. In light of this revelation, we return back to the original problem. Why did the victim have an earpiece in an ear in which he couldn't hear? Ah. You only get one shot in life. There's no turning back. If you want to claim that mirror, the mirror wasn't there, right? Then this problem is all yours. How do you explain what the old man saw? If I can answer this, then I'll be much closer to the truth. I can feel it. Are you going to be okay? Can you really solve this contradiction, Nick? There's more than just one contradiction, Maya. What do you mean? There is? Remember what Maggie told us. There was another man at the t at the t victim's table. And there was a sample CD on the victim's table. It all flies in the face of Mr. Kudo's testimony. And I think I know the reason. Why nothing in this case is adding up. Well, Mr. Knight, let's hear your answer. Yes, Your Honor. The reason behind all the contradictions in Mr. Kudo's testimony is simple. go! This case is riddled with contradictions. Yet there is one very simple answer that clears them all up. A and that is... The incident Mr. Godot witnessed and the incident the victim experienced were two completely different events. What? Museum. What? <laughs> yes, the victim that Mr. Godot saw wasn't Mr. Glen Elg at all. It was an imposter, a phony pretending to be Mr. Elg. Obviously, unlike the victim, there was nothing wrong with the imposter's left eardrum. That's how he ended up wearing the earpiece in his left ear by mistake. Huh. Phew. <laughs> what even? Order, order in the court, settle out. Settle down, or I'll clear the courtroom. Quiet, Gramps. Why don't you clear out of here, huh? What did you say? Right. Are you saying that Mr. Cadeau saw was a setup? Yes. Someone pretended to be Glen Elg and acted out the whole coffee poisoning. All for the express purpose of creating a witness out of one Mr. Victor Cadeau. That's insane! Get real, trite. Why would anyone want to do that? Isn't it obvious? The thing Mr. Kudo was most insistent about in his testimony was... The serving girl brought him a javachino, but she put something in it. That's a serving girl right there in the defense chair. I remember her well. It, it's hard, so hard to believe, but... There was one and only one reason to show Mr. Cadeau this fake poisoning. To show Maggie Bird in the act of poisoning the coffee. Objection. 
Are you insinuating that the wait waitress in the old man's story was a fake as well? It's true that there were no other customers in the restaurant at the time, but... It's also true that the chef was there. He would have noticed what was happening. But that's right, well witness. If your restaurant really was the scene of such a theatrics, you would have known about it, correct? Ooh la la, the, this is most difficult for me. No, it's quite simple. All you have to do is testify. You are under oath, after all. Was there, in fact, a phony at Trey Bin that day? The defense demands that Mr. Armstrong tell the whole truth about what happened. The defense's request for additional testimony is accepted. You will accurately explain in detail the events in the restaurant that day. Wee, oui, wee, oui. wee, oui, wee. Oui. Need water. In the restaurant. The old man never mentioned a CD, but Maggie mentions a CD, so I think that's what it's about. Okay. Here we go. The victim, Monsieur Elk, uh, he came to my gentleman. I remember the old man arrived not long after him. There were no other customers. When he got word, he won the lottery. Mon Elg became v very excited. It was approximately five minutes later that the poisoning incident occurred. Then there was no time for a phony to do the Just so we're clear, there was no mirror in the restaurant after all. Je vous demande pardon. Forgive me, Your Honor. I lied because I wanted the mess to be cleared up quickly. What you have just done is commit perjury, Mr. Armstrong. I will decide how to punish you later. Oui. But now, we will hear your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Hmm, he took that perjury charge a bit too well. But I'm guessing he'll be in more serious trouble after this cross-examination. Oui. Oui. In the restaurant. Alright, go, press. Was he alone at his table as well? Mostly, I saw him from the kitchen. Yet the defendant, Miss Bird, remembers it differently. He swears there was another man at the victim's table. Objection. Huh. Unfortunately for you, Trite. Yesterday's witness also testified that the victim was alone. Ah. You know, seeing you squirm like that reminds me. Of a certain coffee's bittersweet bite. Of course he's gonna seem alone because it's a phony setup. What kind of coffee has he been drinking? It's not coffee, it's love. It's love that's bittersweet. Hearing Maya say that makes her seem wise all of a sudden. That's bad. Alright, press this one now. By old man, you mean Victor Cadeau, correct? Oui, he comes often for my special coffee. I drank your coffee once, Mr. Armstrong. It's special, I'll give you that. It's worth a sip just for the experience. Oui, you make me so happy, Monsieur. You are most welcome anytime. I said it was worth one sip, and nothing more. He's <laughs> dick comment. Alright, let's see here. So old Mr. Kudo arrived at the restaurant around the same time as the victim. Maybe I should ask about his arrival in more detail. What time was it? Out of curiosity, about what time was it when Mr. Kudo arrived? Oh no. I could not remember, Monsieur. Hmm. I believe we were told by a witness yesterday. The crime was reported at 2.25 p.m. by a kind of scary old man, sir. Does that perhaps jog your memory, witness? The incident happened about 20 minutes after he arrived. So the victim must have arrived between 2 and 2.10 p.m. noon. Hmm, just after 2, huh? Thank you for your help 
enjoy my mimi, monsieur? You are wonderful. <laughs> I can't sit here all the time and do nothing, can I? The time of day will be added to the witness's testimony. Oui, monsieur judge. Everything I do, I do it for you. Merci bien. That's French, isn't it? <laughs> I'm glad at least one person is in a good mood. He's even humming a song to himself. Are you absolutely sure about the time? When I think really hard, I am sure it was after, just after two. We. It is the time I stop serving a la lunch menu. Wait, wait, I always break for lunch when the restaurants are serving the specials. I've been known to wind up a case early just to make it time. Make it on time. Ah! Uh, <laughs> I guess you should never get between a hungry judge and his lunch. Oh, would you look at that? It's almost lunchtime already. Oh no! Witness, get on with your testimony, please! So your only customers were Mr. Kudo and the victim? Objection. Museum. How many times do you need to ask the same thing, Trite? You'd never catch me drinking the same blend twice. Huh? You're trying to establish the presence of a phony victim in the restaurant. But you're wasting your time. You can't grind bird seed to make coffee if you catch my drift. Good! But there's a hole in this testimony somewhere. I'm sure of it. Did you see him? No, I was in the kitchen, but I heard him. I remember him shouting, yes, half a million dollars, uh, bucks. Presumably the defendant heard that too, then, correct? Maggie? She looked like a poor little frightened dove. And what about Mr. Cadell? Lord Man choked on some bird seed that got stuck in his throat. Hmm, it seems we now have yet another incident on our hands. Okay. And what were you doing at that point? Without any customers, you must have had time to kill. I am a multi-talented woman, Monsieur. Sorry, what do you mean? There is the renowned chef, John Armstrong, and the tragic poet, Clarice Armstrong. <laughs> Clarice! Oui, I was writing a poem. An angry tale of a chef in half a million dollars, a doubt. Cooking for a man who won a half, half a million dollars on the lottery. It is called Porque. It means why. Perhaps I could recite it for La Court? Please don't! Okay. You mean you contacted the police as soon as the incident occurred? I asked Loadman to call from La Payfoot? By your own argument, right? The purpose of this phony victim's performance was so the old man would see it. In other words, uh, once the incident occurred, this opportunity would completely disappear. Indeed. Bien, it seems the Chateau of Doubt has been lifted. Ne sais pas. Hmm. I guess Mr. Armstrong's connected this case, huh? Absolutely. Someone was impersonating Mr. Elg, and I refuse to believe he was ob oblivious. He was there the whole time, after all. But if you're right, wouldn't Maggie have noticed too? She fell unconscious when the incident occurred, remember? Ah, you mean that's when the phony stages act? We'll know for sure once I find a hole in his testimony. Hmm, okay, that's weird. Maggie was active, but she says she saw two people before she got knocked. She knocked out, right? Which is weird. The only way is if someone else was the waitress before the Maggie stuff, but they say Maggie when he... No, Maggie fainted when the actual elk died, not when the fake one died. That's the only guess I have right now, but... 
don't know, it's a little confusing. It is a little confusing. The autopsy is the problem here, right? The autopsy says between 1.30 and 2.30. Let's give it a shot. Okay. No, that ain't it. That ain't, that ain't it. That ain't it. Oh yeah, the lottery. Right, this becomes a contradiction right here. At 1.30 p.m. Okay. There it is. It couldn't have been, because this. I'm afraid I finally got you, Mr. Armstrong. Yeah? What do you mean? He's actually maxing, that'd be hilarious. At the time in question, the victim was listening to the radio with his earpiece. The show he was listening to was Millionaire Radio. Each week, they announced the winning number of a half a million dollar lottery ticket. Oui, that must be le show mon elg was listening to. I can't see any problem with this testimony, Mr. Knight. I wonder. You say the victim arrived at your restaurant after 2 p.m., correct? Oui, oui. I am sure of it. I remember it perfectly now. I know it was that time because I had just finished saving the lunch menu. Get to the point, right? If you have one. That show is broadcast live at 1.30 p.m. And it claims to be the most thrilling 10 minutes of your life. It's on the air at 1.30. Now, supposedly, the victim made some noise when it was announced that he had won. And yet, I don't believe his cry of joy could have occurred after 2 p.m. Because the show had already finished more than 30 minutes earlier by that time, point in time. Well, 20 minutes. No! This victim we've been told about has done nothing but be it but the impossible. Listening to the radio with a ruptured eardrum. Catching a show that was already over. There's only one conclusion you can draw from these facts. This victim was an imposter acting out the poisoning 30 minutes after the real murder. Thirty minutes after Oh Okay, oh okay, 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 okay. okay, okay, okay. So the first murder was at 1.30, or after 1.30, they did that, and then they, and then they waited for old man Victor Cudeau to show up, and then they did the fake murder. That's what I was getting incorrectly, okay. Yes, there were two Glen Elgs in Trey Band that day. For me, I thought they did the fake murder, and then they, while well, the old man's gone, they did the real murder. But no, they did the real murder first, then the fake murder. That's where I was getting confused. I'm dumb. Yes, there were two Glen Elgs in Trey Bien that day. But Mag did Maggie know Victor Cudeau was there? Like... Did she not notice Victor Cudeau wasn't there when she was doing the first... Uh, what I there's so many weird holes in this. The real Glen Elg now dead, having been poisoned by the real killer. And the phony Glen Elg acting out the events for Mr. Cadeau to witness. It, it certainly seems that way. I mean if that wasn't the case, how could you explain the time discrepancy? Objection. Quite a performance, Trite. You were almost on a roll. Huh? But sadly. You, you lack the rock-hard foundation of rhythm to build your song. What is this? Music Theory 101? Let's recap. According to your imaginative theory, it's now just after 2 p.m. The phony elg is performing a play for the benefit of Mr. Cadeau. How do you explain, then, where the real Glen Elg is? I don't believe I have to spell this out for the court. However... At that time, the real Glen Elg was already dead. That's certainly the obvious conclusion. Objection. But where's the body? Thank you, Trite. That's exactly what I was hoping you would say. What? what? Now, I presume you can prove this theory of yours. Can you explain where the missing corpse went to? The, the missing corpse? 
According to the old man's testimony, there was only one other customer there. If that's the customer, if that customer was the phony Glen Ilg, then where did the killer hide the body of the real victim? Ah! Good question! The prosecution has a valid point, Mr. Wright. If your theory is to stand up to examination by the court, you must provide us with the proof by answering the prosecution's question. Where did the killer hide the body? Y yes Your Honor. No conjecture, Trite. Let's hear some facts for once. Show the court a piece of evidence that proves where the body was hidden. What? E evidence? Wh what's with the tense pressure in here all of a sudden? I thought I had him, but that contradiction. But he's turned it all around and backed me into a corner again. I instead. Well, Mr. Knight, the court n will now hear the defense's theory and evidence. First, where was the body of the real Mr. Elg concealed? It had to be inside, Trey. Had to be inside. It would have been too dangerous to take the body outside. Obviously, the body must have been hidden somewhere inside Trey Bien. Hmm, interesting. But where could the body have been hidden inside a restaurant? Perhaps you would care to show the court on these plans, Mr. Knight. Yes, Your Honor. The, the exact location where the body was concealed inside the kitchen is... The kitchen! The body was hidden here. Hmm, I see. Nice supposition. But the real question is, can you back it up? Where's the evidence that proves the body was hidden in that location? Ah, balls! I think this small bottle explains it. Mr. Armstrong, do you recognize this bottle? No, 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 no. I have never seen that ugly bottle before in my life. I only use the very best bottles, Monsieur. The highest quality only for me. Where was that bottle found, Mr. Drake? Interestingly enough, Your Honor, it was found in the kitchen of Trebien. Eh? Gue? But I only ever use these bottles for my aromatherapy oils. But this bottle doesn't contain aromatherapy oil, Mr. Armstrong. No, it contains a medication. What kind of medication? I'm sure everyone remembers, don't they? That Mr. Glen Elg visited an otorologic fudge that word clinic and was given medication that day. Otolaryngological. Y you can't be serious. The defense had the contents of the bottle analyzed, and I have the lab results here. The contents of the bottle match the prescription that Mr. that was given to Mr. Gl Elg. Ugh. Elg's murderer hid the body in the restaurant kitchen. At which time this bottle fell out of the victim's pocket. Mr. Armstrong. When the incident occurred, didn't you say you were in the kitchen? M -m mon dieu! Yes, you know what I'm about to say. It was you who hid the victim's body. You did a fine job pretending to defend my client, Maggie Bird. However, you were setting her up to take the fall behind the poor girl's back. Nun! Oh, order! Order! This is an extraordinary... Development. Witness, did you... Did you murder Mr. Glenelg? Never! I could not do such an horrible thing. No. What? No. What? M Mr. Godot. The bitterness. Every time I get lied to, I always down a mug of coffee. That's one of my rules. Do you have the slightest idea how many cups you've had by now? Then I then I like to do the same to the person who lied to me. I like to take them down with an empty cup. Listen up, chef. How about a brand new flavor in, in your ear? 
my H deficient friend. I got him on that. Jefus Taman de Pardon. Please, you must hear me out. It is a trap. Listen to me. Au revoir. You hablo espanol, Mr. Armstrong, and por favor is Spanish. Yeah, that's what I was noticing. I'm only going to ask you once. Did you do it? None. No, none. Absolutely none. I simply... I... Let's hear it. You've got one shot. Right, Gramps? Witness, the court will permit you the chance to make one... Final statement. If you lie under oath again, Mr. Gato's coffee mug awaits you. As does my gavel. It, we, it, it is clear. What did they always say in the movies? I've got a bad feeling about this. Very well. Begin your final testimony, Mr. Armstrong. There's another testimony? The confession. It is true, I eat the body in the kitchen. A man forced me to do it. I had no choice. I had to go along with him because there was a reason why I could not refuse. But I did not kill him. I saw it. You must believe me. Okay, four things. Okay. You were forced. By who? I could not say. Or I will be erased. Let's try a different question then. What was that with the paper? Ah, oh, okay, what about it? When Mr. L died, was he really the only person at his table? Hmm? Zid was. Zid was another man. Huh. I knew it. Maggie was telling the truth. By the way, what happened after Gumshoe fought... The tiger, right? Because Gumshoe is here, so where's the tiger? You may cross-examine the witness now, Mr. Wright. There's just one more thing I need to do. I gotta break this guy and get him to tell us the name of the real killer. Break him in half! Alright, here we go. Break him good. Break him really, really good. So, uh, do that. <laughs> It is true. I eat the. Oh, I got that part. Did you carry the body by yourself? We. Oui, I carried him, and I carried Maggie too. Maggie too. When she saw the victim collapse, she fainted. I could not leave Elsie. But why did you hide the bodies? Okay. What man? Who was he? No, no, I cannot say. I fear for my life. He's really scared. You have to put... You'll just have to put the words in his mouth, Nick. Yeah, I'll shove him in there good. Yeah, you're right. If he won't tell me, I'll tell him. But why would you go along with this man? I had to go along with him because there was a reason why I could not refuse. And what reason would that be, Mr. Armstrong? You know, Monsieur. Yes? Surely you cannot expect a young maiden to talk about such an embarrassment. A maiden? You're a bit old to get away with that. And a bit too male. I can't finish the cross-examination without establishing his reason. So I'll just have to prove it with evidence. Hard evidence. So, you are claiming that all you did was hide the bodies, is that correct? Hey, is that right? If we are to believe you, Mr. Armstrong, you must tell the court everything. You must make clear the identity of the man who ordered you to do this. Hmm? He's already confessed this much. He might as well stop dancing around the real issue. Yeah, but he really doesn't want to tell us who the killer is. Then suck it to him, Nick. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Presenting, alone, 
Yep, there it is. You have a half a million dollar debt, don't you? Uh, half a million dollars? Is this true, Mr. Strong? Mr. Armstrong. Oui. Le... Je suis du soleil. I was weak and I borrowed the money. This is Mr. Armstrong's Achilles heel. And that's why you couldn't refuse anything asked of you by this man. Did... Okay. Tigre. A half million dollar loan from a black market loan shark. And you had no way of paying it back, did you? That's why you were forced to do anything. This man told you. Oui, it is as you say. Mr. Armstrong! The tiger. He told me he was going to use my restaurant for a business rendezvous. On the day in question, he was meeting the victim to demand that he repay his loan. I don't know why it happened like that. I just did what he told me to do. I had no choice. I carried the party and the incons... conscience. Uh, Maggie out of the dining area and into the kitchen. At the that, I just tried to forget what I had seen. I think we can now safely say that the man who forced your hand was Mr. Furio Tiger. Tigre. Hmm, I do have one further question for you, Mr. Armstrong. The poison and the lottery ticket were recovered from the defendant's apron pocket. Was that your doing as well? No, I know nothing about that. Making it look like it was Maggie who had done it. I was... I was not... It is despicable. Mr. Godot. Hmm. You will summon this Fury Tiger as a witness. I doubt that can be arranged today, so I will, he will adjourn for now. Proceedings will continue tomorrow. Thirty minutes. What? But what? The trial will go on. I'll see to it myself. I need half an hour to get that guy on the stand. Not a minute more. Holy crap! Okay, so someone's a badass. <laughs> How the? Don't sit back and relax yet, Shrite. No one knows if that chef is really telling the truth or not. This trial could still go either way. Very well. Your request is granted, Mr. Godot. We'll resume once Mr. Tiger is ready to take the stand. Until then, kickball. <laughs> Court is adjourned for a 30 minute recess. Now, kickball. What? You're telling me Godot's gonna get this guy in 30 minutes? He's that much of a badass. He's that much of a badass. He's that much of a badass? <laughs> Okay. Okay, game. All right. Well, that's going to be it for now. I had fun with watching. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Having fun. Thanks for coming by, and see you next time. <laughs>